In this video, we are going to do an in-depth review on the new Amplaxa Travisio Intravascular Delivery System, which is designed to deliver Amplaxa devices. Also, let us look at a case study on the use of this new system. Hi guys, all the structural interventionists, pediatric cardiologists, fellows, cardiac technicians and scrub nurses out there. My name is GT Ko and welcome to my GT Catgasm channel. I have no financial disclosure and this video is not sponsored in any way. I'm purely a hobbyist with passion for cardiac interventions. Some of us may experience the excitement of after a successful complex intervention. Certainly, I'm not the best person to teach you the skills or techniques. There are many great experts out there. Most importantly, we want to do no harm to our patients. Let me show you the unboxing, the technical specifications of wires, cables, balloons, catheters, stands and devices. Please allow me to read the IFU or instruction of for use for you. Generally, all of you out there do not even bother to read the IFUs. Why? Hmm. So let's dive into our first hardware, which is the Amplaxa Travisio Intravascular Delivery System from Abbott. The Amplaxa Travisio Intravascular Delivery System has various components which include a loader, a homostasis valve with extension tube and stopcock, A sheet which provides a pathway through which an unplugged device is delivered. A dilator which eases penetration of tissue and minimizes vessel trauma. A delivery cable which attaches to the device to control its movement through the sheet. And finally, a plastic wise. The delivery system size ranges from 6 French to 12 French. Essentially, this is perhaps the first innovation by the Amplaxus devices to the delivery system after the first Amplaxus scepter occluder being introduced more than two decades ago. The innovative design is near the distal end of the cable near the screw attachment about 2.3 cm or nearly an inch. It's very flexible or bendable which is composed of a nitinol core surrounded by a loosely wound stainless steel coil. The cable is 120cm in length. Let's look at how flexible the cable in slow motion in, with the device attached. Therefore, the device sits at the intended position in the atrial septum without being pulled and the device will not move jumped, shift, or repositioned itself immediately after released. In addition, the distal end of the cable has a black marker which you can estimate the device position to the tip of the delivery cable and therefore reducing the fluoroscopy time. So if the marker reached the end of the tohi boss position, you can see the device in this position in relation to the tip of the delivery sheet as shown in the fluoroscopy video. The Travisio cable is compatible with Amplaza Scepter Occluder, Patent Foramen Ovale Occluder, multi fenestrated Occluder, Muscular VSD Occluder, post infarct Muscular VSD Occluder and Duct Occluder 1. However, the cable is not compatible with Amplaza Piccolo Duct Occluder, Duct Occluder 2 and Vascular Plug line of devices. Let's look at this demo set or bench testing which show how the flexibility of the cable without pulling the device and upon release of the device. The left upper and lower panel which uses the Travisio cable 
compared with the standard cable on the right upper and lower panel. In this demo, it is clearly shown that the maximum distance between the right atrial disc and the atrial septal wall while attached to the standard cable were at least more than two times the maximum distance when the device was attached to the travisual cable. Let me show you an example of a case of a 7-year-old girl weighing 20 kg with the last secondum ASD. And in this TE, show that a significant left to right shunting and it measure about 16.6 mm in 0 degree and in 30 degree view show a 17 mm defect and in a 60 degree view probably the largest defect measure here is 22.5 mm which significant shunting and is probably underestimated in this particular view and in by cable view it measures about 22.2 mm. So we decided to put in a 28 mm unplugged scepter occluder and deploy it in the left upper primary vein with just single attempt. We managed to put the device in position. And when we put down the top view sheet slightly lower, you can see the cable is actually very flexible and conform very nicely to the device actually conform very nicely to the defect and when we repeat the TE again with the cable attached in zero degree you don't see the usual splaying or pulling the device by the cable and in 30 degree view you can still see the cable attached to the device and uh, sitting very nicely and conform very nicely to the septum with the septal occluder and in bicaver view as again showing very nicely placed device and if you can this cable you can also do your minnesota wiggles and with kind of a vigorous wiggle you can see the device is still sitting securely in position and we finally decided to release the device and you can see if i slow down the movie clips the device actually didn't move much at all and when we release it I would kind of uh, take the liberty of coining the term releasio erectus as where you can see the cable actually deflected upward when you release it and uh, it, I don't think it can cause much harm to the right atrium but this is just a term and finally the device in good position overall this innovative design will certainly give the operator the extra boost of confidence of the predictability of the device final position but certainly it is not a deal breaker we have lived with the traditional cable for so long However, the marker near the end of the cable is certainly thoughtful and will certainly reduce the radiation for the patient and the operator. Okay, can you do this on your own please? I'm doing some shooting here. Feel free to put your comments down below. There are links to the IFU and reference in the description. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please tap the like button for me and please remember to subscribe my channel and smash the notification button. Catgasm and meow!